I have been wanting to do this video for a while, guys. I want to talk about my dump trailers, and I want to tell you everything that I have learned. Maybe you are looking for one, or maybe you just find these things to be a fascinating machine, because I sure do. What a great invention. And when I bought my first one, <laughs> this I bought this one in January of 2017. Got it on sale. This one I got in the summer of 2021. So it's coming up on two years old. What I have learned is these are priceless machines. <laughs> uh, wow, these things are just versatile. They can do anything. They got multiple uses. You know, you can make money with these too because a lot of guys will buy these and rent them out or they'll haul garbage for people, you know, like site cleanup. But after having two of them now for six-ish years, I've learned a lot and I'm gonna share everything with you. The first trailer I bought is this 2016 Griffin. And it is 10 foot long, six foot wide. And it is, believe it or not, a very well-built uh, well trailer. In fact, there's some things about this trailer that I like better than this trailer. The low hanging fruit though, guys, let's talk about the paint. When you buy a dump trailer, what the heck? It's a steel box, and if you live in a winter state with road salt, this is what it's gonna look like. So I, that was a blind spot for me. I just hate to say that, it's kind of embarrassing, but I didn't think that the paint would have been this bad. I have this on video. It was just over a year old. I didn't drive it through the first winter when we bought it. We brought it home and it just sat. One winter, all the paint came off of it. It just peeled off in sheets. And I think that there's probably quality of paint that I'm not familiar with. They say powder coating, but whatever it was, it wasn't on this trailer. Um, that was my biggest complaint about this trailer is the paint because it just looks terrible. Compared to the Moritz, this is a 2021 Moritz. And in the world of trailers, guys, just like anything else, there's high end and low end, and Moritz are considered a high end trailer. And we'll talk about the features. The Griffin is more of a budget trailer. Like I said, there's some things about this Griffin that uh, really set it apart, I think. Being a budget, a low end trailer, it's very well built, all right? But obviously the paint's a big deal. If you are gonna be using this in the winter time, I think it would be worth it upgrading just to get a trailer with better paint. Now this one is obviously in much better shape and that is because I have never put this on the road in the winter time. I've used this one and I've just been protecting this one and that was my blind spot. Serious, as old as this trailer is right now, it looked like this in that amount of time because of uh, driving it on winter roads. So here are some numbers for you guys. GVWR. Both of these are 9990. 9,990 GVWR. So you're asking, well, why aren't they just 10,000? And that is because in some states, for instance, Pennsylvania, if you are pulling a trailer of 10,000 or more GVWR, you are required to have a CDL license, which is not the case here in Ohio. Your GVWR, you know, check your state. Um, you may have to have a CDL to pull one of these given the GVWR. Here in Ohio, it's not a problem. The limits in Ohio, I believe, are like 26,000, and that's, you know, like commercial semi truck kind of stuff, I think. So that is not the problem here in Ohio. My um, delivery truck, which is not here, uh, I am not required to have any DOT inspection on it. It doesn't have a DOT number. It just has a commercial license plate, as do my trailers. So that's just the way it is in Ohio. I am calling the Griffin a entry-level budget trailer. The Moritz is more of a high-end. Let's talk about some of the things you can expect to get on a high-end trailer. All right. The first thing is you get a much better hitch and this one is adjustable. That would that can even come off and you could put a pintle on it. Not so on the Griffin. It has a more robust jack, 
where this one is not. In fact, that's the second one. And then you also see the hazards of loaning out your trailer to a friend. <laughs> that's the kind of stuff that happens. Um, a diamond plate toolbox versus just a homemade stamp uh, steel one. And your budget trailers, they don't even take the extra effort to put grommets on the, um, in the uh, entry holes. So you can get some rubbing where these cables go through the holes. And anyone with a trailer, you know what it's like having trailer lights that don't work. And it's usually because of that. The Moritz has LED lights. This has incandescent. But honestly, I've had one burnout light on this and I've had one burnout light on this. Um, when I put the trailers up in here, I'll show you, but this has their traditional leaf springs. This one has torsion, um, torsion bar axles. Um, this one also has higher end axles. This has the Dexters and this has um, a brand I'm not, I'm not real familiar with. This one also had a um, higher load rated tire versus the Griffin, but this is my second set of tires on the Griffin and I upgraded those to the heavier tires. They both come with ramps, but I've taken them off of the Griffin. The Griffins would bolt right onto the side of the trailer, you know, hauling firewood and stuff. I didn't really even need them, and they're heavy too, so I just took them off. The Moritz, they're slid up underneath, they're aluminum, uh, much better um, ramp. Like the Griffin guys, you know, it's got the stake pockets for the boards, so you can set your, your boards in here, that increases the height of it but they also come with some side rigidity with these stake pockets. And interesting, the Moritz doesn't have it. So it's just got these. Now this isn't a problem for me, but I'm hauling firewood. Everything's nicely stacked in here. I'm not dumping big boulders or anything in. The Moritz also came with a, a tarp. And I'm serious, guys. If you are looking at getting a dump trailer, get the tarp. Having stuff blow out going down the road is not a good sight to see. Griffin did not come with one, but I bought it and just put it on myself. This was about a $200 item to put on. There's an overview. Let's get these put up in the air and let's talk about the hydraulics and let's talk about the frames and how these things are constructed. They both go up the same way. They have electric hydraulic, 12 volt battery, and this nifty little push button. <laughs> And you push it and up it goes. Nothing exciting here, guys. Same thing, you got your controller, you just push the button and up it goes. I have the solar panel kit and that thing is great. So I just keep the solar charge controller in the box and plug in my solar panel and it always keeps the battery. I have never taxed the batteries on these. They probably can go up and down maybe about six times. Here we are. We got them both up in the air. And the obvious thing right now is the Griffin has two rams. The Moritz has one. There is no scissors lift on either one of these. The scissors is an upgrade. It's on your more uh, expensive trailers. But honestly, I didn't need one because all I do is haul firewood. And for the amount of weight that these trailers can hold, firewood is not very heavy <laughs> for these. So I here's where I don't understand this, guys. So two rams, you think, are better than one. But is it? I don't know. Because if one of these rams fail, it's not going to go up anyways. Uh, it, it, gets, it gets kinked, you know, so it's not going to go up. But here you only have the one ram. It, it reminds me, I was in an economics class back in college and the professor was talking about single income families versus dual income families. And he was saying that when you have a dual income family, you have increased your chances of financial ruin by 50% because you got two people now who can lose their job versus just one. And uh, he sounded convincing, <laughs> but that little lesson came to mind with these rams because I've just increased my chances of one of these rams failing by 50% because it's still not going to go up versus just having the single ram. The bottom line is they're pretty durable. And this one here has got a bunch of up-down cycles on it and they seem to be doing pretty good. 
But here, guys, is what the two Ram trailers give you. They put a center spine down the middle of the trailer, and that adds to a lot of the structural rigidity, which you obviously do not see on the single Ram because it, it can't have a center spine. But what the Moritz has, guys, and this is what I have learned from having a dump trailer for a long time in a winter state, I think you go with the I-beam construction over the box construction because when these are going down the road, the salt and stuff can get inside of the boxes and that starts it rusting from the inside out versus an I-beam. You can get the pressure washer on both sides of it and get the road salt off. Which one's stronger? I don't know. I've heard both ways. I've heard that the I-beam is stronger. I had my trailer mechanic tell me that the box frames are stronger. But you do have a healthy frame on the Moritz. It has a larger tube in the center, and I'll explain that to you here in a second. But you don't see the welds that go all the way across. I don't know. Is that important? But these certainly don't. But here's where road salt can get up into this, these cracks. The frames seem to be 16 inch on center. They're a lot closer together than the, than the Griffin. They're much farther apart, but you also have this center spine. But I also notice on it, you don't have the welds that go all the way across. Now, here is the biggest thing that I have learned about dump trailers. And I hope that I explain this <laughs> well enough for you guys. There are two styles of construction on these. There is what is known as three-piece construction and four-piece construction. And it is understood that the three-piece construction is better. They're tougher, stronger trailers, and that is what you have on the Griffin, where the Moritz appears to be, and I'll show you why I can't figure it out, appears to be four-piece construction. This is what you're looking at when you look at a dump trailer, guys. Where is the weld? The weld goes right up the center of the floor, all right? So there is no weld here. So this is all one piece, this is all one piece, and the front bulkhead is the third piece. So there is a weld that goes here. The thought is if you are using these to haul heavy stuff, boulders, rocks, and you're dumping them into it, a trailer who has the floor as all one piece that it's all welded will start to fatigue over time and you'll start to see the trailer falling apart that you don't see in a three-piece construction like the Griffin. On our Moritz trailer, there is a weld. I don't know if you can see it. It goes across this way, all right? However, there are welds that go down the side and they have them filled in with caulking. So I'm looking at, this is one piece, this is one piece, the floor is two separate pieces, and then the front bulkhead. So it just seems to me uh, even though this is called a heavy commercial, that over time, if you're really using these things and banging them with heavy stuff, that you might start seeing fatigue in this trailer before you would in this trailer. All right, one piece, one piece, and the third piece. This one, I'm just assuming that there's a weld here, guys, because what the heck, it's got caulking in it. Why would they put caulking here if it was all one piece. In the Griffin, you don't see nothing except where the uh, steel was bent to form this one piece. The bottom line though for firewood, I think all of this is irrelevant. Uh, serious, these things are tough, man. And firewood is pretty light compared to what these things can actually carry. You know, what is a cord of firewood weigh? I don't know, oak? can push maybe 4,000 pounds for a full cord, really. And you still got a lot more to go on these. Um, really, even with the hydraulics, they don't even strain when they're lifting up that, that weight. Uh, that's just, you know, these things are built and they're built tough. And I don't think you need to worry about it. If you are running firewood with these, I think, you know, the weight is, is not a concern for you. Another thing to look for, guys, when you're hitched up, believe it or not, <laughs> not all trailers can you lower your tailgate 
without it hitting the jack. I can't do that on the Griffin. The tailgate will lay right on top of the jack, where on the Moritz, you have your clearance. And here's the proof of it from many years of hauling that Griffin. You know, you gotta open up your tailgate. Well, it lays right on top of the jack and then off comes the paint. Now, this is a big thing to pay attention to. The Griffin has your traditional leaf spring construction. The Moritz has torsion bar construction. So the suspension stuff is inside this tube where the Griffin's just got your leafs and your straps. And these are your straps and these are a wear item. And I've already had these replaced. These will um, stretch from the inside and they'll get egg shaped and they can split. So that's an item to pay attention to. Now this is an area that I am not familiar with, but I was told that your torsion suspension rarely, rarely goes bad. But if it does, it gets expensive. Where your leaf springs, if one of them breaks, you don't have to replace everything. My understanding is if your torsion bar fails, you gotta replace the entire axle. Things to consider. Now I was told torsion is an upgrade that gives you a smoother ride. Your trailer doesn't bounce and stuff going up and down the road as much with your traditional leaf springs. I'm going to be honest with you. I can't tell the difference. They both bounce. If this one is smoother, I had always thought maybe it's because it was new <laughs> versus this one over here. Another thing to pay attention to guys is these trailers. There are two types. There is power up, power down where the pump, brings the trailer down and cheaper trailers have power up gravity down where the weight of the trailer is what brings the, the trailer down so both of these are power up and power down and you can tell because it's got the two solenoids on the pump deal with that is your power up gravity down would be a cheaper trailer because this adds you know expense to the pump but if you're in cold temperatures it is possible if you get your trailer up in the air that it is so cold and the fluid has gotten so thick that it won't come down. So putting these down is the same way. You just hit the down button. The one thing guys to pay attention to though is the tailgates. So both of these are barn door style. They both swing open and they're also spreader gates. If you want it to spread gravel, they both do that. Here is what I have figured out though. So the Griffin, again, a lower end trailer has your cam locking door, just like a semi truck. When it is closed, it is closed. The Moritz has the spring-loaded pin. And that holds the doors shut. Why do I point this out to you? Because on two occasions, driving down the road, these doors popped open and I spilt my contents onto the highway. Is it user error? I don't know, maybe the first time. Guys, after that first time, that was traumatic to experience that when you got your name on your truck and you're sitting on the side of the road and you got the road shut down with firewood. All I know, part of my pre-trip inspection is I make sure the pin is in a down position and man, I yank on these doors to make sure they don't pop open. Well, I did that and the next thing I know, they pop open. I have noticed that they have a, like a little tab that sticks out that keeps the pin from coming all the way up to clear the, uh, the hole down here. But I don't know, guys. I'm just telling you, I'm gun shy now. Pulling this trailer down the road, I'm serious. Cause it's part of my pre-trip -trip inspection. I and it still happened. These doors have never come open, ever. Uh, you know, the cam lock, I don't know. If that's a concern for you guys, you may wanna look into that. And if that is the way a trailer is built 
or if there is an upgrade, I think the cam lock is the way to go. So there you go, guys. That's what I have learned about dump trailers. They are awesome to have. Man, are they nice. I use mine as wheelbarrows, both of them. I rarely, if ever, dump anything on the ground with these. I will pick them up in the air and I just stack right off the tailgate. You don't have to bend down, pick anything up off the ground. They're built like tanks. <laughs> the paint, it depends on what you get. And there is a bunch of them out there. I think you just look around for the features that are the most important to you. For me, I think the most important features is the paint, the size, and I like the three-piece construction. You know, that is something that I would look for. Even though I don't haul heavy stuff, that's something that I think brings structural rigidity over the years. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'm not an expert here. I'm just telling you what I have learned. And I haven't learned everything, but I've learned some things. All right, guys. I hope everyone has a great day.